Today, we're gonna learn 10 of my go-to text animations in After Effects. How is it going, guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that wanna shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here, back on the Olufemi channel. And if you've seen some really sick text animations, but you've always wondered, how do you do them? Here is a great place to start. We're gonna learn 10 of my go-to text animations in After Effects. All of them are super simple to do as long as you have some basic knowledge in After Effects. But if you are an absolute beginner, then I first recommend checking out my After Effects basics tutorial by clicking that little pop-up. You can also download the project file that I'm using to follow along. And that's in the description below. Otherwise, we're just gonna jump right into learning and hop into After Effects. All right, with After Effects in front of you, let's start things nice and easy with a simple text reveal. So how we do that is we go to the text tool over here, click a random spot, and then we'll type in simple reveal like that. And then we will center the text. So let's hit V. So we're at our selection tool. I'm just going to make sure that I highlight this text and then I'm going to hit control alt home so that I can center the anchor point to the text layer and then control home. So I center it to the composition. This is just so I can center it dead center in the composition. And it's not just like somewhere like over here, for example. I mean, if it's ever over there in video, what are you doing? Get out of here. I'm doing a tutorial. Like I was saying, if it's somewhere over here, you can hit control home and then it will just go back to the center. And then I'm going to hit P. So I bring out the position for this text layer and then we're going to keyframe this so that it moves from down to up so we're going to hit the stopwatch over here to keyframe it and then we have a keyframe over here in the beginning but i'm just going to move that over to about one second and in the very beginning position i want it to be lower so i'm going to click onto this text i'm going to hold shift while i'm dragging it down so it's uh, straight as i move it down and just like that if i play it through it goes from down to up now this is a really simple movement but i want it to kind of slow down gradually so i'm going to highlight the keyframes like this i'm going to hit f9 which is a shortcut to easy easier frames and then i'm going to go into the graph editor which is this over here now make sure that you're at the speed graph editor which is what is showing over here if it's not showing something like this then you just need to hit this icon over here and just make sure edit speed graph is checked off so i'm going to click one of these keyframes over here and then you'll see these handles i'm going to drag this handle over kind of like that and then if i play it through from the beginning as you can see it gradually slows down making it not look so jerky and robotic and it actually makes it look professional and clean i'm going to exit the graph editor like this and then we have our simple animation done already but we want it to reveal from nothing like a magic trick we're going to create a new shape and we'll use the shape layer over here by default, it'll be the rectangle tool. And I want to make sure that the fill is going to be filled with a color, in this case, white. Hit OK. The stroke doesn't really matter, but I'll turn it off so that there's no solid color or anything like that. And then I'm going to draw a shape around the area that I actually want the text to be opaque and appear. So that'll be this last position over here. This is where I want it to actually see the full text. So I'll draw a nice little rectangle over that like so. And then I want it to basically be gone and disappear if it's not within that box. And how we do that is we're going to use the track mat. So there's an option over here under the track mat column. And if we don't see this over here, just make sure that you click the toggle switches in mode and that'll toggle between these two modes so that you can see the track mat. And for this text layer, we're just going to make sure that the track mat is set to luma mat. And basically what that means is that it will show anything that is bright or white in this case, which is that white rectangle that we drew. So anything that is in that white rectangle, it will appear. So if I play this through, as you can see, once it's in that little box that we drew, we can actually see it and anything out of that will be gone. Play that back again. And that is a simple text reveal that you can use. Moving on, the next one will also be a very simple reveal where it will be very large at first and then it will kind of shrink down into a normal size. So let's learn how to do that. And we're only playing with one parameter, which is the scale. So we hit the shortcut S to bring that up. And then over here, we can hit the stopwatch and we want it to end at 100% at about one second over here, just for now. So we're gonna start off over here and then we're gonna go to the very beginning and then we're gonna make it really big, kind of like that. It can even be cut off and out of frame. And then just like before, we're gonna highlight these keyframes and then hit F9 so that we can smooth out that motion. We're gonna highlight one of the frames, go to the graph editor, and then we'll just drag the handles exactly like what we did before. And then we're gonna play this back and this is what it looks like. Now we can always play with the handles like this left frame, for example, we can have it start faster sooner, just like that. And then we can exit the graph editor and we can move some keyframes around until it looks like something we like. A very simple scale reveal. If it looks a little bit too plain, then some things that you can do is, you know, add an extra keyframe somewhere around here. So right before it lands to its normal size, if I add a keyframe over here and then adjust this so that we move it over to the left just a little bit, it'll make it feel like it softens the landing 
just a little more. And one more thing that we can play with is the opacity. And how we do that is by hitting the shortcut T to bring up opacity. We can hit the stopwatch to keyframe this. And then the starting position over here, we can make it zero so that it reveals from nothing. But if I play it all together, it makes it look like it appears from really big and then it lands to that normal size. Moving on, the next animation is also very easy to do. It's a simple typewriter animation and all it takes is one effect. So we go to the effects and presets panel over here. We write type writer and just right over here, we can drag and drop that over to our text layer. And just like that, if I hit play, it looks like a typewriter animation. And if you want to adjust the speed because this is a little bit slow, all you have to do is hit the shortcut U and that brings up everything that has been keyframed in this layer. And then these are the two keyframes that you can just kind of move around so that we can have it a little bit faster in this case. If you want it really fast, we'll drag it all the way over to the left like this. And that is the typewriter animation effect. Before we continue, I want to talk a bit about today's sponsor, Envato Elements. They have the most insane library of creative assets you could imagine. From sound effects to stock footage to graphics, you'll never run out of things, especially while having unlimited downloads. And guess what? With a link in the description, you can get the first month for $9. All right, let's get back to animating some text. The next one is a trippy one, but it's also very easy to do we first want to animate the position before we apply this effect so we're going to hit p to bring up the position and then we're going to hit the stopwatch so we add a keyframe in the very beginning and then i'm going to move this over down a little bit like that and then we'll go over to about one second and then we'll move this up a little bit and then we're going to highlight both of these keyframes by hitting Control c to copy and then we'll move over one second kind of like over here and then we will hit Control v to paste those keyframes and then now it'll go from down to up down to up just like before i like smoothening out my movements so i'm just going to highlight the keyframes like that and i'll hit f9 to easy ease the keyframes and then now our movement is a little bit smoother just like this and now is the time we add the echo effect so just like before we're going to the effects and presets panel but this time instead of typewriter we write echo so we'll drag and drop that over to the text layer and then we're going to adjust the number of echoes to something like eight because by default it's one we'll change the decay to something a little bit lower maybe 0 0.7 and then if i play from the beginning as you can see there's a bit of an echo effect now right now the trail is a little bit close to each other and we can always adjust the echo time so that there's a longer delay so instead of negative 0 0.033 we can do 0 0.05 like that and you can see that there are more echoes and if you notice that it's a little bit too solid like that you can always play with the decay so that it's a little more transparent you can also have the starting intensity be a little bit lower as well and just play around with these values until you find something that you're happy with and then when i play it back this is the animation that you're left with. The next one is to animate your text through a path. And what I mean by that is that the text can move along a shape that you draw. So with the text layer highlighted like this, we can go and draw a shape. In this case, let's hold that down and move it over to the ellipse tool. And then we're going to draw a circle. I'm just going to hold shift so that it's not going to be like an oval or anything like that. And then I'll hit V. So I'm at the selection tool and I can double click this mask to move it around so I can, you know, move wherever I want the circle to be. In this case, I'll have it somewhere around the center and then hit enter. And then I'm going to move to the text drop down menu like this. Go to path options and then under path we can change that to mask one which is the mask that we just drew and as you can see the text now follows along the shape now if i want to double click this for example to you know bring it down in size it'll be like that and then i can adjust this text by you know let's say for example i want something like this and then i'm going to copy all of this and then go to the end over here and hit paste like that and i'm going to hit Control v to paste it all the way until it is around that circle and then about here i'm going to hit Control a so i can select all of it and i can fine tune the text size until it kind of closes off so we can do something like 33.2 and this is something that i'm happy with and then now it's this perfect circle now a quick tip is that if you don't like how the text is in the circle and you want it to be outside the edge of the circle then what you can do is go to reverse path over here and instead of off you can click it and it will be on the other side like that so in order to actually animate it what you want to do is hit the stopwatch for first margin over here so i click that and i have a keyframe over here right now it's at zero but i can go all the way to the end over here and i will click it drag it over to i don't know let's say 233 for now but that's going to be up to you and what kind of text and shape that you draw but if i play it from the very beginning as you can see it rotates around in a circle and that's how you animate your text to a path next up we have the trim path animation and for this one we actually want to have the outline of this text as opposed to having the text filled like this so how we do that is by going over to the character panel over here and we're just going to swap the fill and the stroke and what that means is that the stroke 
will actually have something instead of the fill, which is now no color at all. As you can see from this indicator of the red line that runs across diagonally. Now, if you don't see anything here after hitting that button, just make sure that your stroke width is actually set to something. So over here, the pop-out says set the stroke width. Right now it's at three, but by default, you might be at zero. So that might be why you don't see anything. So just make sure that you have something kind of like four, for example, in this case. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to right click this text layer over here and then go to create and then create shapes from text. Once you click that, we're going to have this new layer, which is a shape layer, but it will have all of your characters in your text as uh, separate shapes. So next thing we want to do is hit this arrow over here. So we see more of this next to add this arrow over here. We want to click that and then we want to find trim paths because that's the animation that we're going for. And as I mentioned earlier, every character over here has a different shape layer, but in this case, we want to go to that trim path that we just added. We want to click that arrow. Right now, the end is at 100. So I'm going to go to maybe, let's say, two seconds over here. And then we're going to hit the stopwatch for the end position over here because we do want it to end at 100 so we can see all the characters. Once we hit that stopwatch and create a keyframe, we want to go all the way to the beginning. We're going to change that to 0% instead so that it'll start at nothing. And as usual, I like to highlight the keyframes and then hit F9 so I ease the movement. And then now when I play it back, it starts from nothing, but it will fill in the outline of that text to reveal what it says. The next animation is for your text to first start out of focus and then come into focus very slowly. So how we do that is by having your text in the composition first and then we click the arrow over here so we see more of these parameters and just like before we're going to go to this button over here next to animate and this time we're going to go to blur and then over here next to blur we're going to play with this value until it's nice and blurry in this case something like 30 works for me and then instead of it just being out of focus in the very beginning we actually want it to be maybe like completely transparent at first just like before when we were doing that scale and animation it's nice to have it start from nothing and how we do that is that next to add over here we also have this button that we're going to click we're going to go to properties and then we're also going to go to opacity like that by default at 100 but we're going to change that to zero so we'll drag that all the way over to zero and then we're going to go to the range selector over here range selector one we're going to click that arrow that reveals over here right now by default the start is at zero and we're going to keyframe that by clicking the stopwatch over here we're going to move over to maybe a second and a half somewhere around here and then we'll go to 100 like that and then if we play it from the very beginning it comes from out of focus into focus while also being transparent to opaque. So that's a nice and very simple reveal. Now, if you want to create a variation where random letters start popping up first, you can go under the advanced tab over here. So still under range selector, you just got to go down all the way to advance, click that arrow, and then you're going to find something called randomize order. Right now, by default, it's off, but if we click that once, it will be on. And then if I play that back from the beginning, we have random characters pop in into focus. Another variation is that right now, by default, it says based on characters. And what that means is that each character will be uh, out of focus and then come into focus. But let's say that you want the whole word to do that if you have multiple words. In this case, we have focus and in. So we have two words. We can change that. So instead of based on characters, change that to words. And then now what happens is if I play that back, it starts off with focus and then in. So that's how you get your text to come into focus. The next one is a flicker text animation and it's probably one of my favorite ones that I use all the time. So let's get into how to do it. So we'll start things off by clicking the arrow over here. So we see more of this. We're gonna add an animation and it's going to be opacity this time. So once we have that, we're gonna change the opacity to zero. Under range selector here, we're gonna click that arrow so we see more of this. And by default at the start over here, it's at zero. So we're gonna click the stopwatch so it starts at zero. We're going to move over to maybe about a second and then we'll go to 100. And then if we play it back right now, it's just a simple uh, reveal of the text from left to right. But we're also going to play with the end parameter over here. We're going to hit the stopwatch. It starts at 100, but in the middle over here, we're just going to make it so it's maybe like about 18% go to the end over here where the other keyframe is, and then we'll go back to 100% like that. And then if we play it back, it's kind of doing that very small flicker in the middle, but we want it to look a little more random so it feels like it's flickering each character. And just like what we kind of did earlier with the blurry out of focus random characters, in this case as well, we're gonna go to randomize order, and instead of off, we're gonna click that once, so we turn that on. And if we play that back, that is what it looks like. And that is our simple text flicker animation. Next up, we have a text tracking animation. And what I mean by tracking is basically playing with the space in between each individual character. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to click that arrow so that we see more of these parameters. We're going to go to animate. And then this time we're going to find tracking like this. And at tracking amount over here, we're going to play with the values so that right now it starts by default at zero, which means there's zero space in between each character. But the higher that I go with this number, the more space I have in between each character. So 
we can do something like 30 for now. And then we're going to click that arrow next to range selector. And we're going to keyframe the start by clicking the stopwatch. So we have a keyframe over here and then go to about one second. And then we will change that to 100. And then if I play that back from the beginning, it will close up that space in between each character. Now, as usual, I like to smooth things out by highlighting keyframes like this, hitting F9 so we easy ease everything. And then it'll kind of compress itself to its normal state. And that's another animation that you can take away with. And finally, we have the randomizer effect that you can apply to your word and characters. So let me show you what I mean. If we go to the arrow over here, so we see this, we're going to go to animate as usual. And this time we're going to find character offset. Once we add that in, we have something like this. Under character offset, we're going to keyframe it by hitting the stopwatch over here. And right now it's at zero. So we're going to move that keyframe with zero value all the way up to one second. And then at the very beginning over here, we're going to offset it so that it's minus, I don't know, maybe like 20. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. But right now, if I play it back, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice that it kind of like overlaps some characters over here, which is kind of odd. And if that's the case, then you can go to character alignment. And instead of left or top right now, by default, we can click that and we can click adjust kerning. And that basically adjusts the space between the characters like this so that there's not going to be any weird overlap, but it will get a little bit wider in certain areas, but that's going to be up to you. I just want to provide that solution if you find that problem. So although right now it's random text that kind of like feel very scrambled and then finally reveal the text, I kind of want to be a gradual reveal from left to right. So let me show you how we can do that. We can go to the range selector over here. As usual, we click that arrow so that we can see the start, end, and offset. And in this case, we're going to hit the stopwatch at the very beginning over here, and then we start at zero. So we're going to go to the end over here where we reveal the entire word. We're going to change that value to 100. So now if I play from the beginning, it's becoming the word from left to right. Now, in this case, I'm not a big fan of how it's going a little bit wider and then collapsing again so often. It just makes it feel a little bit messy. So in this case, for character alignment, instead of adjust kerning, we're just gonna go from left or top and then just like that. Now, although there are some characters overlapping because it's staying true to its width, it feels a lot cleaner and I like how this looks. And that's how you create your random text animation. That's it guys. Those are 10 text animations that I often use for that sleek and dynamic look. Now, although I went through 10 different techniques, I think the fun part is mixing and matching them to create something that looks even more sick. So I encourage you to get creative and try them all out. Give the video a little like if you found it helpful and let me know in the comments which of these 10 are your favorite. Also, make sure to subscribe to the Olufemi channel so that you don't miss anything from Josh or the other amazing instructors on this channel. If you want to check out what I'm personally up to, my Instagram and YouTube handle is right there below. Otherwise, have fun animating and I'll see you guys in the next one.